see Ojuku's unforgivable mistakes he made during the Biafran War. Odumegu Ojuku is undoubtedly a great man, one whose name can never be detached from the fabric of history of the Nigerian nation. But no matter how much it is held in high esteem or how much distaste one feels towards him, he was always respected for his fairness and belief in the course he was taking. However, all didn't go as planned for him and his people, and a lot can be blamed on him as we try to remember some of the so many bad decisions he took so many during the Biafran War of July 1967 to January 1970. Ojuku allowed them to kill Nzeobu the Great. It was rumored that he was afraid of Nzeobu would challenge his authority after the civil war had ended. After arguing in Ronsi overthrown government in the July 1966 counter group, Nzeogu was still left in prison but was released in March 1967 by military governor Lieutenant Colonel Ojuku of the Eastern Region. However, after Nzeogu released from prison, his activities were curtailed. His relationship with Ojuku deteriorated and both of them never saw eye to eye. Nzogu was never in support of secession. He was, however, a man who was very determined in wiping Nigerians clean of all crooked soldiers and politicians and soldiers. Sadly, reports at the time carried it that Lieutenant Colonel Ojuku let the soldiers withdraw too soon so that Nzogu would be trapped at the war front with little troops. Ojuku's refusal to quit the war would be seen as a form of never see die attitude, but failing to do so after the first year on seeing that he couldn't, can't win was a catastrophic. Lieutenant Colonel had a very bad attitude of dethroning his generals at the first gaze that they are trying to sabotage him. Most of the time, what they were trying to do was to advise him. His impulsive response even led him to making civilians his war generals. A good example which comes to mind is Colonel Achuzia who was never a soldier for one day. At the turn of the war, when it became so bitter and fierce that the Biafran weapons got exhausted, Ojuku loaded trailers with hundreds of young men who were only armed with clubs and machets. He dumped them at the war front where the Nigerian war tank would just lower its fifties and open fire on poorly and Biafran fighters. Ojuku was too emotional and was never good at planning battles. More troubling was that everyone who tried advising him got deposed and jailed. It was once narrated in a book by a high-ranking Biafran officer that he drove to the war front at Abakeleki from Enugu only to discover that the Biafran soldiers who had been dropped by Colonel Ujuku and were facing the Nigerian superior military might punishment didn't even dig trenches. So he gave the order to start digging trenches right at the battlefield which prevented the Nigerian tanks from overrunning the Biafrans on the very first day of battle. Namdi Azikiwe, Akano, Ibiam, and the likes once regretted that Ojuku never accepted their advice, that it was impossible to win the war, and as such, he refused to intelligently accept a truce about 
a year or two before the end of the civil war. By the time there were no more men, Ojuku started arming children as his soldiers for battle. It was also baffling that the Biafra medics lacked stretchers from day one. They were usually referred to as porters because a group consisted of four men who were usually responsible for carrying the wounded on their heads and run to the rear of the battlefield. By the third year, it got worse as Biafran soldiers had to leave their wounded behind and fled the battlefield. Ojuku did not make a preparation toward the war. The man just started fighting with the available resources at his disposal while ignoring the advantages of having good allies and strategies. He should have got the support of big countries like the United States of America and Great Britain, at least in exchange for some oil. However, Gowon knew this when he made agreement with Cameroon to deny the Biafran's weapon supplies through their border in exchange for the Bakasi Peninsula. A simple act which made the Biafran resistance very miserable. However, these eight mistakes never defined a man who fought for a just cause. He fought for his people with his resources. He survived and came back to context for presidency with Abga, which translates to a lot. He may be no more now, but his legacy of a hope for reconciliation will always live on. Thank you for listening to this news. Wow, this is unbelievable. Yes, um, every no one that doesn't have a wrong path in his or her own life. In as much as you have a good path, definitely you must definitely have a bad path. You can never be as perfect as Jesus because only Jesus is a perfect man. Ojuku, yes, he has made a mistake. He made a true mistake, a terrible one at that, during the Biafran War. But then, the first to remain that he faced the war. He faced the war with all that he has gotten. He faced the war with his resources, with all he has acquired. He used it, he used them to fight the Biafran war to finish. Even if they couldn't win the war, Ojuku never gave up. It's just that Nigerians were so lucky to have been given a helping hand by the British. If not, Ojuku would have won the war. So this is actually a message to our present Biafrans, our fellow agitating Biafrans, for us to see the the the, the sacrifice, your your uh, your, your uh, the great uh, Ojuku made during his time. That's to let you know that Biafra as a republic, the struggle for Biafran has been in existence for a very long time so that the republic is still the struggle that the struggle is still on is never and will never be a mistake and that is the reason why till today i still salute the courage of mazen amdekano who has taken over from his predecessor odumi bojuku that spirit of having Biafra at heart and fighting to the finish is so much inside of Mazin Amrikano. 
He may not be a military leader, but he has the spirit of leadership. So my viewers, without any missing word, permit me to see that Biafran has gotten a leader in place of Odume Wojuku.